Hello and welcome to this week's tips and tricks. This week I want to go over the five most common mistakes I see happen very often within Gigantic from beginners and some veterans out there. Number five is chilling on the airship for a long period of time. I know most people look at the skills in this period. My advice is to go into the practice arena and mess about with skills on there. See how they work and flow. Because while you're actually waiting on the airship, you're actually wasting your team's time for summoning and contesting um, summoning points on Sanctum Falls and Siren Strength. So it's not too bad on Ghost Reef because there's no middle point or neutral point as it's called. So you want to capture these as fast as possible to claim your mark on them and then extend your attack from there. So sitting on the airship is not very valuable at the start to your team. So my advice, practice. In the practice arena when it comes to looking over your skill overviews. Number four is kind of my personal favorite. I see all the new players seem to be wanting to jump onto the fire drake because it looks strong and powerful when in all fact you can actually interrupt its main attack which makes it completely useless as well as you can cleanse the um, fire off yourself so the, the main attack actually becomes useless again. So it doesn't do no damage because of all this reason, especially in higher tier games to middle tier because people have caught on to this. So people don't really summon it. Like it's handy in team fights, but not really handy handy. Like I would rather a Bloomer or a Cerberus or a um, Cyclops to block points than have this giant non-movable target that can be shot down in seconds. Especially if everybody's on it, more or less. It kind of works in team fights, but not too much, as long as no one's running cleanse or interrupts and instantly stops and sees what the Drake is doing. But other than that, it's not advisable to run the Fire Drake. Maybe the Storm Drake when it comes out, because the Storm Drake is absolutely destruction on the field, and that is really good. Number three is Obelisk placements. I see a lot of new players summoning Obelisks on their own team side of the map. This can cripple your team, especially as obelisks do not pick up orbs and you have to manually pick up the orb yourself. So summoning an obelisk will put you behind. You use obelisks to contest and control points like the middle point and the enemy side as obelisks can be used on the enemy side and be summoned to stop them from picking up orbs as obelisks stop the enemy from picking up orbs until the obelisk is killed. So number two is very important, but also I don't want to go too hard on this subject because people are learning. But with Gigantic, when you're doing a 1 vs 5 under the enemy's guardian, it is a bit tilting, I do admit it. Especially as you're worth 10 power, so you're basically chucking away 10 free power to the enemy guardian if you're just soloing the enemy for some strange reason. You should be working with your team to kill off the enemy, not just going ham like it's some um, first person shooter and going crazy and going for these double and triple kills. Because if you're going for 1 vs 5, it's probably not going to work and you're going to get like one shot by the Guardian or some crazy thing like that. So you do not want to be going for 1 vs 5 situations if possible. Especially at the start of the game, because I see this happen at a lot of the start of the game. Like, new players will literally just run to the other side of the base, see if they can kill someone. And then they get toasted by the enemy guardian. And finally, we are down to our number one, knowing when you're the last alive on your team. This seems to happen to new players and existing players, like you get carried away in a team fight and you don't notice your team around you dying. So then you end up dying as well which causes your team to have a much larger cooldown than it needs to. Instead of backing away and giving your team like a 15 second cooldown, you die and then you're boosting your team's cooldown for respawning to about 20 to 25 seconds, depending where you are in the game. Thank you all for watching. This is not all of the mistakes that seem to happen quite often within Gigantic. There will be more and there is one mistake that I do want to talk about the most, but I'm not going to cover it in this video. I think I'm going to make a separate video on that matter. But thank you all for watching. Feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button so you can get notifications of when I make new videos. And thank you all and I hope you have a nice day.